Who's the right person to write these? I think, you know, the, the, the person that's leading that, that department should, if they're not already existing, they should be the ones, in my opinion, that's responsible for creating them. But it's not an individual approach, right? It can't be because they're going to be focused on their own, their own department, that, that workflow, and they may not think holistically about every other piece and how those parts and pieces interact. So I think it starts there, but then it's got to be shared. And, 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 you know, I think you, you had asked the question earlier about um, how do you, and you've mentioned training before, you know, these documents, once created, they should serve as a training and as a, um, yes, you've got to have the discipline and, and as, as an accountability piece, right? Did you do it? So that's why I think they, they, they've got to be simplified so that a, a manager or a whatever level, a leader or supervisor done can, can ultimately drill down quickly and, and adjust on the fly. Hey, we missed that step. You know what? That's where we, yeah. that's where we went wrong. Um, you don't want a bunch of analysts in my opinion, in your organization trying to figure out where the, where the SOP was missed. But I think it starts there. And then, and then one of the lessons I learned again in my career was talked about, do you look to, to promote from within or how do you keep, how do you keep those SOPs in, intact? That's a dangerous place. Uh, just from my own experience, you know, I, I think, yeah, I've, I've looked to promote folks that have lived it and breathed it. Then once you give them the keys, sometimes things get changed. And if you, as the, as the, maybe the C-level leader or that next level up aren't really tuned in to, to what is being changed, or if they're not communicating changes with you, suddenly you, you find yourself making mistakes or the company's making mistakes and you're unsure why. Uh, at one point in my career, I found out like the, the guy that was really, really good at, at executing the SOPs when he became the, the warehouse manager, he decided he wanted to change them um, on his own. And we started to have fairs. Unbeknownst to me, shame on me, I should have been more tuned into that. Um, but I think there's a danger in that too. So yeah, it's not a, yeah, it's not a, a living point. document or it's not a book that you know just sits on a shelf. It is living, but it can't be changed without the input of other leaders so that you understand holistically the impact. Well, you're, so it's a great point. You're reminding me that there needs to be some boundaries. There needs yeah. to be a standard operating procedure for how you change and adjust standard operating procedures. But exactly. I, I like the idea of um, you can't show up every day and tweak it in, in the spirit no. of trying to make it better. I think no. whether that's something you do quarterly or twice a year or once, whatever that is. And by the way, it's, I don't think it's one, but one person might be responsible for writing it and document it. And te- right. you, know, you had said very often it's the, the, the high value employees and the achievers in the department mm-hmm. that a lot of this content is going to come from. But I, you, you know, you and I both know, um, you know, sometimes the best individuals at assembly on the show floor or in a shop right. don't have the natural skills or ability in terms of writing. Um, I'm thinking about some of the guys on the show floor. Spelling may be part of the problem. Um, no, but it, you know, sorry, that's a little joke at some of my friends on the show floor. Um, but you get the committee together or the leadership team together, right. and that's who's going to do the review and say, is this still, is this still how we do this? Any improvements here? Absolutely. And so once it's agreed, then somebody else is responsible for the actual documentation, maybe. And, and get it done and get a deadline and get the updates out to people. But I, I do, you know, we're, I will tell you, we're not good at building the review of those. Sure. You know, we know how we yeah. do things, but we're not good at building a regular review of, of updating to your point, because the stuff that was 45 years old is still working for us, even though there might be technological advances that would allow it to do us to do it more efficiently or. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, that those reviews happen uh, when there's a failure, right? When there's I mean, a failure, yes. Typically exactly. when it happens. I think you're, you're, you're better served, to your point, to, to build in uh, a review period so that it's not a failure that you have to try mm-hmm. to, to, to fix, uh, but that you're staying ahead of those. 